because you asked. Praetor47, I don't know if I got that right. He asks, here's a newbie technical question. In the world of Volt Up Gear Down, by the way, I still love that. How much does it matter where you gear down? For example, almost everything in your spur and pinion at the transmission, or maybe evenly distributed through the system, or everything on the axles, ring and pinion, your portals, etc. Really good question, Praetor47. So let's talk about it. If you have a question that you'd like to see featured on the channel, put it down below. We'll read them, do our best to get to them. Now, what are we talking about here? Gear down, volt up gear down. You want a lot of gear ratio in your crawling rigs. There's a lot of performance that you get out of it. Lots of other videos cover that. So we're gonna gloss over that little point right now. But the question that he asks, or she, where do you put your gear down? Is it important? So if we're talking about a shaft driven rig, pretty much almost everything that I have up here, something that has axles with a drive shaft leading to a center transmission or something that is just not on the axle itself. We have this drive shaft right here. It rotates. And I got one word for you that's made of two words. Torque twist. Torque twist makes it where it does actually matter a lot, where you put your gear down. And in a quick nutshell, the best place to put all of your gear ratio is in your axles themselves. This is one reason why you'll probably find that your portal axle rig, which has the same geometry as your straight axle rig, your portal axle rig actually is easier to drive on the rocks because it has a lot less torque twist. Now, the easy way for me to explain this without going to a whole bunch of technical diagrams is that your drive shaft has to spin to get power from A to B, right? The faster this drive shaft is spinning, for any load at your wheel, the less amount of torque that your drive shaft is actually transmitting. So if our drive shaft is spinning, let's say one RPM versus 10 RPM, our load of the tires hasn't changed, but the drive shaft that is spinning 10 times the speed is actually only putting in 10% of the torque to get there, but it is also spinning 10 times as fast. So the faster you can spin your drive shafts getting to your axle, the least amount of torque twist that you'll have, the easier it is to tune your suspension and the least amount of torque twist you have to deal with when you're driving, honestly. And it's just a much better setup on a rig. There aren't a lot of rigs that have almost no gear down in the axles, but way back yonder, we had the Ascender that came out and it only had a two to one gear ratio in the axle because they wanted a nice scale pumpkin and they really didn't put much room for gear down in there. So only two to one gear down, it had the worst torque twist of any rig that came out. But thanks to the modern geometry, it still drove great. And this was kind of a proof that our geometry was coming a long ways, to be honest. But if you threw an axle on the ascender that had a lot more gear down to it, then you got just a much better behaving rig. So that is the somewhat medium length answer to the question is that you want as much gear down in your axle as possible. Everything that's in front of the drive shaft, behind the drive shaft, wherever you're looking from, that's the best way to set up a rig so that your drive shaft is spinning as fast as possible and all the power is being produced through RPM and not torque going through that drive shaft. Now let's talk about some finer details of this. So it's not really possible to put all of your gear ratio into the axles easily. There's a few ways that you can kind of get around this if you're able to cut your own custom gears or something like that, make your own custom housing. You could have a worm drive axle that had portal gears on the outside. You could probably get 50 or 75 to one ratio in your axle itself, but we are limited by a few things. Number one, the housing itself has to be able to take that torque input. So where your ring and pinion are, they're trying to spread apart your axle housing. And if you put way too much reduction in that one spot, it's gonna split a plastic housing really easily and it may even deform an aluminum housing on there. So splitting it up between multiple parts on it allows you to have the same set of thickness for the most part. We can ignore weird design, uh, design constraints, but if you split it between multiple parts in your rig, your plastic can be the same thickness and be able to take the load easier because you're splitting it up between the portals, you're splitting it up in the pumpkin itself, you're splitting it up in the transmission, etc., etc., etc. So if you have it all in one spot, you may end up finding yourself just splitting an axle. On the next issue that we have is that there's only so much room in an axle before your pumpkin is literally dragging the ground. And we don't want that. And we can look at some of the old designs versus the new designs to see how they've addressed that. But short 
description of it is that you have to make your pumpkin small enough to where your rig is actually performing on the rocks and not just dragging and that limits the amount of gear down that you can have because our pinion that is driving our ring gear can only be so small before it's ineffective and honestly an eight tooth pinion works but a nine tooth pinion is quite a bit more efficient so you're really stuck in, in going below an eight it doesn't matter what it is going below an eight tooth really does not work out to be a very efficient pinion at all so we're limited by that eight and we can make our gear teeth smaller and smaller like going to uh, uh like let's say a modulus one versus a modulus two the two is going to have twice the, the uh, smallness the teeth are going to be twice as small in modulus two but since your teeth are also twice as small you don't have as much actual metal contact your teeth themselves will be weaker so if you're trying to get gear down by making everything smaller and smaller and smaller, you're just also making it weaker at the same time. So there's this balance between a small enough pinion for the gear down, a large enough pinion to transmit the amount of torque that you need, and then being able to get the gear ratio that you need without having that huge pumpkin. So there's some limiting constraints that we have. We can't just have a pumpkin this large on a 10 scale crawler, put all of our gear down in it and say, hey, it's gonna work great. Because obviously if the pumpkin is this big, then our axle is not gonna fit within a 10 scale rig. So that is why we have gear down in other parts of the rig, but the best performing rigs do have the majority of gear down in your axles. Like a portal from Vanquish, it's gonna have, let's see, a two to one on the outside and then somewhere around like a 3.5 or a 4.1 in the axle itself. So you're looking at about seven or eight to one gear ratio. And then you only need maybe another let's say eight fold in the rest of it. So you're, you've at least got a two fold step down right there and then it goes a little bit more. In some of the olden days, we would have up to 25 to one in our transmission that's on the chassis and then our axles would have like a 3.5 to one somewhere in there. Uh, the old ones were 3.3 to one at best and a lot of them were 2.8 to one. And so we did have worse torque twist, honestly. And even the newer rigs where you don't have portals, they still have managed to find that tiny pinion size with a decent enough ring gear that's not scraping on the rocks. And so we have managed to kind of push a little bit more, at least a little bit more gear ratio into our axles as previous. So it's helping out definitely. But I mean, modern geometry can deal with a whole lot and going from an old rig, which yeah, I don't know if I've got any super duper old rigs around here. Well, this one's got old geometry. Something like this, which is the original AX10 geometry, if I put a portal axle on it and then geared up my transmission, this thing would handle so much better because it has abhorrent torque twist. It has an extremely high roll center on it. And as much gear down as we could get into those axles is gonna help us out on all of that because the, again, the least amount of torque that you're transmitting through your drive shaft. So the faster you're spinning your drive shaft getting to your axle, the least amount that you're going to have actually on the axle itself pushing. So oh, I've got an alarm for something going on here. I don't know why I have the alarm. Is there a name? Oh, great. It didn't even show me the name. It just shut it off. Let me look. Oh, that was for last week when I got some boards from another town. We don't need that today. <laughs> we don't need to get boards today. All right. So to summarize, it does matter where you put your gear down. And in a nutshell, you want the most amount of reduction that you can get in your axles. So that means running portals, if portals are something that you like to drive. And in my opinion, putting the underdrive in both of your axles, front and rear, is ideal. And then if you want some dig ratio, then you either get it out of your transmission or maybe you change your portal gears themselves or maybe you just do underdrive in the rear in a standard ratio in front for example you're going to get the best mix of both worlds as opposed to putting let's say like overdrive front and rear or just overdrive in the front and standard ratio in the rear and then trying to deal with your ratio in your transmission it's going to perform better so Put your ratio in your axles as much as you possibly can, and you will have the best time on the rocks with the least amount of torque twist. So I hope that answers your question and that you can understand what I was trying to convey here. And again, if you do have some questions, put them down below and maybe you will be featured on the channel as well. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day. You've made it to the end of the video. Hopefully that means you liked what you saw. 
If you want to help out the channel, you can like, subscribe, and definitely comment down below. We would like to hear new ideas from you, so be sure you let us know what you'd like to see. There are some other suggestions probably floating by my head right now that you can check out. And otherwise, we appreciate your support and your help growing the channel.